Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Construction Business Management Tips. In this series, we look at construction businesses and we look at some of the processes, systems, hard skills, soft skills that we can use in this industry to make ourselves better, to make ourselves more competitive, to be more successful and to be a pillar in the community. In this particular episode, we're going to be looking at hybrid working models where coming out of the pandemic, uh, things have changed and we're entering a somewhat different world. You know, everybody says everything's changed upside down. Yes, uh, a lot of things have changed, but at the same time, there's a lot of traditions that are deeply rooted. There's a lot of ways that people like to do things. So while things have changed, there will be a number of things that will not change so fast or there'll be some resistance to change or maybe it's not the best to change. So we're going to try and talk about that a little bit and some of the things I think that construction businesses need to uh, think about as things op are opened up and uh, people are going to have a little bit different view of things. You know, in the construction industry, working from home is traditionally, it's not been a thing. Uh, what do we do? We build things. We're on sites. We have tradespeople that are putting things together. You have to be there to build it, right? Uh, but on the other hand, there's some things that we don't necessarily all the time have to be there. And there's certain roles within the construction industry that don't necessarily have to be in an office. You know, a lot of roles where people are working in an office. Uh, estimators very frequently are working in uh, the head office of construction businesses as one example, but there's many other examples of different positions, schedulers, etc. So we don't always work on site, but we are traditionally used to, if we're not on site, we're in the office. And I think that's going to change somewhat. Uh, if uh, you are a tradesperson, I think that's not going to necessarily change. But I do believe that uh, if you're even a project manager, do you have to be on site all 40 hours of a work week? Uh, perhaps uh, there's uh, four hours an afternoon that perhaps you'd rather be away from the actual office and you'd like to um, really sort of hone in and focus on things. Because let's face it, uh, if you're in an office, you get interrupted a lot. And that can be uh, somewhat distracting. On the other hand, if you're at home and you're working and you have kids, that can definitely be distracting as well. So in some cases, it's going to be a very individualistic uh, process. But one thing's for sure, people got kind of used to that option of working from home when they were more or less forced to do it where it was possible. As I said, in the service industry, it really wasn't possible for a lot of people. Uh, in those particular sectors and construction considered an, is considered an essential service in that respect. And so if we're building or maintaining buildings, you kind of have to be there for certain operations or, as I said, the trades. Uh, but there were a lot of people that were working from home quite a bit of time and that kind of changes their viewpoint on their jobs and their employers. Um, some of the pluses are no wasted time in traffic. Okay, so you've got a day of uh, meetings. Uh, perhaps you're a general contractor and you normally would, I had this perfect example with one of the mechanical contractors that I've been working with um, at the Mechanical Contractors Association. And they said to me, you know, I just did a meeting. It was with a consultant and uh, the meeting I would have had to drive about an hour and 20 minutes um, out of town uh, to meet at their office normally and then I would meet for maybe a half an hour or 45 minutes and I'd drive back. So you got an hour and 20 minutes, let's even just say it's an hour out there and an hour back and the 45 me minute meeting it goes, I just flipped on my uh, computer and we met uh, virtually, we were able to go through the drawings, we were able to go through all the documents uh, and it was just easy as could be. The other way, I pretty much waste a half a day. This way, it takes me 45 minutes and we're done. So I don't think that's going to change. Now, do I have to do that in the office? Could I do that at home? Could I have that option and flexibility? Again, this also leads into trust. Do you have trust of your employees that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing? This is another area which I believe has to uh, change. A lot of this goes back to Adam Smith in the 1700s, who was uh, the first modern day economist that said that 
people will work as slovenly as they are able to. Uh, in other words, he was saying slovenly is like slow. People will do the least amount of work that they're able to and get paid for it. That was his viewpoint at the time. And if we hire the right people, that's not true. Uh, if we hire engaged people, we hire people that are self-motivated and we give them work that they are engaged with and we find ways of doing that, I don't think it's going to matter whether you're in an office or whether you do part of that uh, from at home or elsewhere. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of pluses from that point of view. And I don't think that we're going to be driving as much for short meetings unnecessarily. I think people will be saying, okay, could we do a quick Zoom uh, meeting this afternoon at three? Uh, I think we have to be careful, though, that we don't end up doing more meetings just because we're able to do that. We've got to make sure that the meetings have purpose. That's another danger as well. It's like going back before there was email. You know, if people had to um, write a memo, a memorandum, that's what they used to call it, they would think about it because they had to write it out and they had to mail it and they had to send it and then somebody had to open it and receive it. You didn't get a gazillion of them. Now people fire off a gazillion emails. So you got to be a little bit conscious of the technology and make sure that it's being used properly because that could run some issues. Whatever efficiencies you gain, you could lose. Uh, it definitely does give that quick access to people, less interruptions, as I as I mentioned. But again, that's kind of contingent on your home life and the age of your kids and that kind of thing. It could be worse working from home. I know there are a lot of people, they prefer to work in the office because there's too many interruptions at home. Uh, but it definitely has a lot of effective ways and means of communicating. Although not for everyone. Some people have a little bit more trouble getting that, you know, uh, that connection with people through a, a screen like right now and um, having certain protocols as as well. I think I'm going to do another video on education. Uh, you know, in meetings, in, con in construction meetings and meetings that I've been involved with, with the construction industry in the last uh, year and a bit, people have their cameras on, right? That's a, that's a one mandate so that you can see people, you can see postures, you can see uh, smiles, you can see concern, you get a, the emotional expressions on people, you need that, uh, which is different than just a phone call, right? Uh, so it definitely leads to more work-life balance. And we live in such a complicated world, that is uh, an issue. And, you know, work-life balance, it's, it's a challenging uh, definition that people look at it different ways. Some people will say, well, there's no such thing as real work-life balance. If you are passionate about what you do, you're not always just looking at where I cut it off and where I start it. Whereas other people, I got to separate my work from my life and they like to have more clear boundaries. And working from home sometimes makes that separation more fuzzy. So for some people, that can be an issue as well. Got to think that one through a little bit, and that may be very individualistic for people. Can attract and retain the best people. Well, this is a big topic. Uh, I teach a human resource management course or people and culture course at University of Toronto in the Masters of Engineering uh, program, and I can. One of the examples that I like to give is um, Yahoo. Uh, basically, Marissa Mayer, when she took over at Yahoo. Um, she quickly said that everybody had to work from the office. And at that time, most people were actually working from home. So in, you know, in uh, basically uh, those kind of mechanisms like Google and Yahoo, a lot of them were touting the fact that there was a lot of flexibility of when you came into the office and when you work from home. Uh, but she kind of mandated that everybody had to uh, work in the office because she felt that it kind of separated uh, people from uh, their work. There wasn't that there wasn't that culture of uh, collaboration going on. And so there was more individualistic and that was a problem. But the only issue with that is if you've got a culture that is used to working away, and that's why I'm mentioning this now, and that's why I'm doing this video now, we kind of had a whole year and a bit, like a year and four months where people, a lot of people have worked away from the office. They've kind of built certain habits, rituals, routines to that. And if suddenly it's changed again, uh, in that case, uh, Yahoo, it was longer than that. Well, you know what? Let's say you are a programmer and you are really, really good at what you do. Really good. And let's say your competition allows you to work at home. 
but your current employer has changed the rules that now you have to work in the office and you don't like that. Maybe you feel there's lack of trust issues. Well, if you're really good at what you do, you have an opportunity. You can go to that other company. You have choices is what I'm saying. On the other hand, if you're so-so at what you do, you don't have so many choices. So what happens in a company like that when there's a dramatic change and maybe half the people aren't happy with it, maybe the other half they're okay with it, but even that much, that's a lot, right? And of that half of people that aren't happy with it, maybe half of them are very good at what they do. Well, who's gonna be the ones that leave? It's gonna be them. So now you've just lost your best people and you've retained the uh, so-so ones. That's not good for your business. So you have to be kind of cognizant of that when we say that. And it can also be used as a tool to help attract and retain the best people. Maybe some people, they, they take care of uh, their parents and they want to have a little bit of flexibility with their time. It's not that they want to get the time off, but if they can do some of the work from home, well, you know what? If they have to take their parent to the doctor between three and four, they can do that. And then tonight they can catch up uh, at doing that work at home. So there is a lot of flexibility built in. The minuses to this, you know, everything has pluses and everything has minuses. Loss of connection with people, that can happen. Some, there's something really tangible about sitting down and uh, discussing something one-on-one. -on -one. There is that connection and we as humans have that sort of um, uh, connection that we like to make. It's also difficult to build really deep relationships with people. You know, when you drop by their office, see how they're doing, you meet them at the uh, coffee counter uh, and you have chat about things. Um, that's that. There's some value in that. It's hard to measure that. Very difficult because it's very um, qualitative. Uh, it's uh, not as um, objective. It's more subjective, but it's there. Uh, more interruptions, as I said, kids and different things like that, it could be problematic. It depends. Like some, some it's going to be a lot less, some it might be more. It kind of just depends. Depends on your setup and all these other things. New people have difficulty getting help and uh, having a sense of belonging. So for us that were working in a company and we kind of went with the pandemic and we were kind of working from home, but if you knew everybody in the company, it was still wasn't hard to source those people and meet with them online. But just imagine you're new, you just started and you don't know anybody. It's kind of like, uh, we're, you know, you feel a little bit lost, a little bit disoriented. You might ha not have that attachment or loyalty to the business. Uh, so that can be a challenge too. Uh, collaboration, it can be more challenging, but again, with the technology, there can be ways of working around that, but definitely it can be uh, more challenging. And of course, in construction, we're site oriented too. You know, I teach lean construction courses and I'm deeply into the aspect of adding value and eliminating waste. And one of the, one of the core tools in lean is a Gemba walk. What's a Gemba walk? It's going to the problem, going to the issue. Uh, so uh, working from home, it's more difficult to go to the problem. Um, but definitely that could be part of when you do visit the site and you can coordinate those kind of things. The question I think in the construction industry is not so much, I never go into the office. I think the question in the construction industry is, can I do some of this work from home? And is my employer flexible enough to allow that? And can we work that in a positive and collaborative uh, way? Um, so that can be um, uh, what could be clarified. Getting things fixed like your, your laptops and your computers, that can be another uh, area that can be more difficult, obviously, if you're never in the office, if you can just ha pop by the IT person's office and get it fixed. I recently had a problem at the college with uh, mine and it was kind of a, a bit of a, a nightmare to try to do it uh, online with everyone and finally I went in and it was a lot easier um, to get it uh, rectified that way. Um, so you can definitely get an understanding that getting things fixed and having resources nearby um, is challenging and the other aspect it's harder to build those relationships. Um, resentment from on-site staff, well think about it. You've got a lot of people that uh, work on-site and maybe have to do their work on site. Like I said, uh, you know, the four persons, the trades, 
they need to be on site. Well, you know, they're not going to be they're not going to be roughing a, a plumbing system in from at home, right? Uh, so those things have to be. And then they see somebody else that doesn't have to work on the site all the time, or maybe they leave on a Friday at twelve o'clock because they can do the rest of the work in the afternoon. They beat the rush hour traffic. They don't have to sit in that. There can be resentment. So you have to be able to stick handle that and manage that and expect that People, we are human and we do have these biases that take place. So some of the things that I would recommend to construction businesses, having operated and operating a consulting business as well, um, some of the recommendations that I recommend is don't ignore how the industry is changing. You know, this sort of rock hard, you know, we're going back to the way it was and it's going to be exactly the way it is. Well, it may cost you some of your best employees. So if you're if you're good with that, that's something to um, think about. And you know, when I grew up in the construction industry, my dad had a construction business, and I can remember on a on a day, you know, very often at the end of the day, we would finish maybe early on our site that we were working on. We'd finish maybe at 3.30, and we're at one end of the city. He'd want to drive out to the other end of the city to see if anybody, any of the workers at the other site were leaving early, right? This is before we had all these cameras and everything on everybody. But he'd want to drive to the other end of the city to see, it was before cell phones, to be honest, uh, if anybody was uh, if left early, right? And so now I'm stuck in traffic and we're going all the way to the other end of the city. That's a matter of trust issues. You really want to build uh, trust in your team until somebody's showing you that you shouldn't trust them, uh, to be honest. And the type of people that you hire and the type of people that you train and retain and the loyalty that you want to build is very important from a business uh, point of view. In particular, in the construction business, I said it's a very competitive business. And because of that, it is challenging to keep the best people. And we want to make sure that we build good mutual trust and strong relationships with each other. So test and experiment different things. Nobody knows exactly what works and what doesn't work yet. We're in this experimental stage. And having a better understanding of that can be very helpful for us. And make sure you communicate that with, with your people so that they know um, what you're looking at. And you want to be creative and you want to be flexible. Uh, you don't want to be sort of this uh, rock hard sort of rigid, rigid, rigidity in your uh, business operations because the world is changing very rapidly. And there's a lot of things that need to be adjusted, tweaked, tested, experimented with. I can work in some areas and there's going to be some areas where it won't work and it doesn't make sense. Uh, so you have to keep um, that in mind uh, with that. So you want to get the right mix and the right balance. And just remember, these are exciting times we're in with the construction industry and the world as a whole. And if you're running a successful construction, or you want to run a successful construction business, you got to be staying attuned to the way things are changing, the way people's attitudes are changing. And then you want to work to create a culture and a framework within your business that can thrive in that environment. So I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please click subscribe, click the like icon and notifications to see new videos as they come out. And we can build this community together. If you have your own comments and experiences, I would love to hear them. So please put the comments uh, in the uh, description below and we'll talk soon. Bye for now.